Hey girl, hey, welcome back to the Your Pretty Pennies YouTube channel. I'm Tara Jones Williamson, financial success coach and lifestyle designer. Designer, Welcome back. If you are new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you are liking this content, I already know you are, sis. This feminine dating series has been super lit. So if you have not seen the previous videos and we talked about creating your love list and, you know, dating and setting your goals and everything for dating, make sure you do that. Today we're going to be talking about the law of attraction and dating, aka biblical principles, because we all know, if you didn't know already, I shouldn't say we all know. If you, have, if you haven't noticed already as you open up your Bibles, ladies, you should be reading your Bible, right? Getting your spiritual knowledge on, right? you will realize that a lot of the principles that they wrap up into the law of attraction and the secret and things like that is actually from the Bible and it's been around for thousands of years. So like, let's get into it, right? Also remember that I did just finish wrapping up the wedding on a budget series. So if you are interested in learning how my husband and I paid $5,500 for the wedding of our dreams by planning and executing a beautiful wedding on our own, um, I did a 10 part series on that. So you could go back on the YouTube channel, find that series and absolutely watch that as well. And you'll also see our highlight video of our wedding that happened back in February of 2020. All right. So a little bit about me. Um, I am a newly married mother of three. I went from a single mother of one to newly married mother of three by being extremely intentional about how I approach dating once I started dating again a couple of years ago and I end up meeting my husband and then we dated for about nine months or courted for about nine months got engaged and got married in six months and he is absolutely the man who matches my love list and go back in the video series if you are unsure what a love list is do your research do your homework we already talked about that but absolutely married the man that's on my love list and I want to help you manifest the same all right so let's talk about law of attraction and dating now I know the law of attraction is such a buzz thing right now and so I wanted to tackle that because it is kind of common and I wanted to make it very practical for you because it absolutely works the terminology is different and it's absolutely biblical principles. Think you reap what you sow, the law of reciprocity, you are what you attract, you are what you think about, and what you think about manifests, you know, um, all these different things. Your words create your world, you know, speak life and not death. You know, there's power, there's life or death in the power of the tongue or power of your words. Like all these things pretty much sums up the same thing. Everybody just putting their new spin or title on it, right? Um and we have to realize that all this stuff is true. You know, whether we know it or not, whether we like it or not, whether we agree with it or not, there's just some spiritual and universal laws that are working and operating every day. And since you cannot control it, and just because you are ignorant to it means you lack understanding about it, or just because you don't agree with it or you don't think it's right or you don't think it's wrong, whatever the case is, does not mean it's not working for you or against you. So it will behoove you to start understanding how the universe in which you live works, all right? And the first thing that we're going to talk about is universal law of attraction or uh, reaping, reaping and sowing, um, cause and effect, the law of transmutation. All these other things are wrapped up into what I like to consider the law of attraction, all right? So... Um, here's a, just a couple tips. It's going to be very practical, very simple. It's not going to be a super long video. I'm just about to wrap up the way I took law of attraction or these biblical principles or universal laws and universal principles and put them to work to help me manifest, you know, the marriage and the courtship, the dating life that I desired. All right. So the first thing that my tip is to you is to definitely view men and dating as positive. I have to start off with this because Oftentimes I pro I you know speak to women and they are defeated, scared, nervous, un avoiding or some other negative feeling towards dating, especially dating men and it's just like sis, how do you expect this this love life, this marriage, this relationship, these goals in your dating life or in your courtship or in your marriage or your future marriage if you think if you look at it as daunting right if you look at men as competition or they're dogs or they're going to do something to you or they're predatory or they're no good or whatever the things that you got in your mind says 
good luck with trying to manifest the lifestyle that you desire and the dating life that you desire and the marriage that you desire, right? If subconsciously you resent and you're, you know, literally, you know, repelling what you say you want, right? So the first thing is you got to get your mind right, sis. You got to get your mind right and start off with a clean slate. The men that you've dealt with in the past, your daddy, your uncle, your cousin, your grandfather, whoever you've who've set this impression of what a man is, if it's different than the man that you desire or the lifestyle and the, you know, the dating and the courtship and the marriage that you desire, you're going to have to push the reset on that and say, just because that person is like that does not mean that I can't attract and be with someone who caters to everything that I want in life right you absolutely can they didn't stop making men when they made your baby daddy they didn't stop making men when they made your dad they did not stop making men when they made all these people who have left a bad impression on you about men right there are absolutely men of god out here who love women who cater to women who desire to be protectors leaders providers men of god spiritual coverings right leaders in the family head of household there are men out here like that but if you keep telling yourself or subconsciously you have this belief that's literally stopping you from you know having a successful dating life or courtship life or a marriage you know even if you get engaged you're sabotaging it good luck good luck and that's where the law of attraction comes in you're going to have to start doing the work to make sure that you're not being your own demise when it comes to your dating and your relationships all right you have to view men as a compliment to you. And for me, I know it's easier said than done. One thing that I always share that is a big part of my life is my father. My, I'm a daddy's girl. It is what it is. I'm 31 years old. And okay, I'm still in quarantine. That's why I'm filming in my room because the kids are here and everything. But if I was not, I would probably be somewhere under my dad. Like I'm always at his job. I'm always calling him and messaging him. He's been working really Sorry, I got a phone call, so I have to stop the video. Now I'm back. But yeah, like I was saying, my dad, I'm a daddy's girl. And so the impression that my dad left on me as I started becoming of age and started dating and courting and things like that was that men are good. They're providers. They're protectors. They are loving. They are kind because that is the impression that my dad, my grandfather, and my uncles left upon me. So I am very aware that not all women have that same experience with men and no matter like will smith said it doesn't matter who hurts you and it sucks let me not say that it does matter who hurts you and i'm sorry that someone hurt you or left this bad impression towards you and yes it, whether or not they say sorry whether or not they change their ways whether or not you for you know whether or not they deserve your forgiveness you have to forgive them but then you have to find a way to heal right you have to allow the lord to heal you so that you can move on from that just because they hurt you don't mean you have to stay there to where you're stopping and blocking your blessings and you're literally repelling the thing that you say you want right so we have to make sure that we wipe the slate clean when it comes to men and look at them as compliments not a headache not competition not predatory not lazy not stupid not any of these things right we want positive ideals of what a man is and what a man should be because remember what you focus on and what you give energy to grow so if you start viewing men as they're no good they don't do this they don't do that guess what that's all you're going to see that's all you're going to experience but if you if you say you know what men desire to cater to me men are generous men are loving men are providers men are protectors you will find yourself attracting that around you in and out of dating relationships right you will find yourself being in situations where men are wanting to do more for you just because of the way you're showing up in the energy that you're giving off which is saying hey i am ready to be taken care of by a man ready to be loved on by a man ready to be respected ready to be you know um in the presence of a man right oftentimes i always say your attitude can walk in the room before you and so you will be saying okay i'm ready to start dating i'm ready to meet a man like this but your attitude is repulsive right your energy is repulsive you know and so we have to work on that in the inner because as above so below right 
as above, so below. It first starts internally before it projects outwardly. And that's the thing. You can put on as much makeup and lipstick and cute hair and wigs and weaves and nails and everything else. And if your energy is off and if your mindset around men is off, you are going to be repulsive. Yes, they will sleep with you. Yes, they will make you a baby mama. Yes, they will come live with you. Yes, they will eat up all your food. Yes, they will drive your car. But would they want to protect, provide, cover you spiritually, all these other things? No, they will not. Right? And so we have to remember that that is the name of the game. All right? And always remember that feminine women pair as well with masculine men. We do not want emasculated. We do not want to attract emasculated feminine men who look to women to take care of them, to do everything for them, to be their mothers, to do all these other things. No, we're looking for strong masculine men that desire leadership, that desires to be the head of household, that desires to be a provider, desires to be a protector, desires to be a spiritual covering, desires to be the pastor of his house. Like those are the men we're trying to attract. And so what does that mean that you have to be? right? If you desire a man like that, or if you want a man like that to be in your life, what type of woman does he want? Does he want a woman who low-key bash men, who vents about men, who has issues and hangups in her past still about men, who's going to take out her frustrations or her triggers and all these things out on him? No, because if he is of high quality and of high value, you have to be a high value woman in order for you to be the favor in his life. Remember, the Bible says he who finds a wife finds favor in the Lord. You want to make sure that you're viewed as favor, not a headache, not a burden, not as wishy-washy, not as bipolar, not as crazy, all these other, you know, uh, adjectives that men can give women. We got to make sure that we're not coming off as bitter, angry, upset, emotional you know all these other things because that is off-putting to a masculine man a feminine feminine men they love the gossip they love to go back and forth with you they love to argue with you they love to play the blame game a masculine high value man is gonna be like girl bye get your life together and i will see you later i don't have time for this i'm using my time in other areas the lord has told me how to use my time and how to find a wife and you ain't it right now sis he ain't about to argue with you right and so we got to make sure that our mindset and the way we're showing up and our energy are attracting wrong men and repelling the right men all right so here's some tips to make sure that you're doing this daily affirmations is number one affirmations and scripting so next step number two is going to be scripting or step number three actually is going to be scripting it affirmations have changed my life they are very powerful you can ask my husband since we've been dating and courting and then the first time he was invited to my house in my bathroom because i was in a two bedroom ba uh, two bedroom one bathroom home and so when he had came over one time when we were uh introducing the kids with the movie night he has seen my affirmations on my bathroom mirror and every week or every couple of weeks or however long i need to basically i'm always creating affirmation that goes against my current negative belief so for example i used to struggle with getting up and exercising i know the value of exercise i know the value and the importance of health health is wealth is more important than financial management is is health and fitness i understand it but there was still such a block with me and working out and so i created these affirmations and i will say them every day because affirmations are completely powerful they what they do is they retrain your brain so basically without getting too scientific when you write down an affirmation in present tense and you say it to yourself whether you believe it or not at that point it's almost like you're telling your brain what to think so if you say i i enjoy being in the company of masculine men i have great men in my life i forgive all the men who have hurt me I am a blank slate when it comes to men. I have a successful, juicy, loving, sexy dating life. All these different things you're saying about dating, your brain will start to say, yup, that's your brain will start to believe it and then you will start acting based on your belief because actions are driven from beliefs. 
right? And when you start taking positive actions, those actions stack on themselves and they start to create the lifestyle you desire. And so it all starts with your belief system. So creating affirmations in the present tense and creating positive affirmations and not just positive like woo, -woo but positive as don't use the words you don't want to see, only use the words you do want to see. So never say an affirmation of, I don't attract feminine men. That's not how you create an affirmation, a positive affirmation. That's a negative affirmation because you're writing what you don't want. You got to write what you do want. I only attract and, and date high quality men, high quality masculine men, men of God, men of means, whatever that looks like for you. You got to write exactly what you want and put it in a positive tense. I I do, I am, I have, as if you already have it, right? And so you can start retraining your brain on thinking in that way and on that level so then your actions can follow those affirmations, all right? Tip number two, watch your words inventing again. Your words are seeds, just like everything in the universe. There's the universal law of cause and effect, universal law of sowing and reaping, at what comes around goes around your words are uh, your words are aligned with this universal law as well so you have to watch your words only speak what you want venting doesn't do anything let's be clear venting does not do anything instead of venting what you should do is turn everything that you've experienced that was negative into a positive for example, I can call up my bestie Mary, hey girl, hey, if you watching, and say, girl, I just had the worst date with this guy. He was so annoying. He kept chewing with his mouth open, girl. Um, and he stepped on my heels two times and he didn't even hold the door open for me. I had to go and valet the car myself and blah, blah, blah. Like you can just go on and on and on about all the things that went wrong. Or you can realize that your words are seeds and you can start with girl that date was very interesting i'm so excited that he did bop 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 right next time when i go out on a date i'm going to be very thankful and grateful or i'm going to attract a man or i know the next man will hold my chair open will not be so clumsy will definitely pay for appetizer entree and dessert whatever it is that you didn't get on that first day because remember you are attractive which means you will have some low quality men probably in the mix some medium quality and some high quality men and so you just focus on experiencing high quality men even though reality you ain't you didn't experience that right you don't have to stay in that state of energy by constantly venting about what just happened and what should have did and what should have could have would have instead why don't you get on the phone and say girl yes that day was interesting it wasn't the best one and it wasn't what i desired here's what i desire i'm so excited to finally get this is what i want that date showed me of what i want and what i don't want because that's the thing Sometimes we as ladies don't know what we want until we're experiencing it and be like, yeah, I don't want that no more, right? So sometimes the men come into our lives and in our dating life and be like, yeah, no, that ain't what I was supposed to get. That ain't what the Lord got for me. Let me write that on my do not want list, right? So Or my <laughs> just leave that off the list, right? And so then we can start tailoring our, our conversation to what we do want. Vent to, and talk to your girls about what you do want. Forget about what you don't want. Who cares? Forget about that dude. Who cares? Like, he don't even deserve all the attention and energy and time you devoting on a conversation with your, with your girls. Like, talk about what you do want and what you do expect and what you are excited for, right? And then tip number three is ask, believe, and receive. This is the backbone to the law of attraction. Ask, believe, and receive. The Bible says you ask not because you have, you have not because you ask not, right? And so we have to get comfortable with asking and being okay with what we want, right? I already know that there are women who are watching me that will cringe at the thought of saying that they want a man who makes a certain amount of money or he needs to have a certain amount of biblical knowledge or he needs to want a certain amount of kids or be able to provide for a certain amount of kids whether you work or not like i said in my love list video my husband watches that video my i told my husband straight up when we were courting how much money he needed to make in order for me to accept his ring 
I don't know why, but we as women in today's society, we get caught up into the nuances and thinking that marriage only runs on love. No, it does not, sis. Like, it's bills that need to be paid. It's children that need to be taken care of. It's emotions that need to be put in check. It's things that need to get done. It's a lifestyle that needs to be manifested. And if you cannot 10 times yourself with the man you're with, why are you with him? Just like if he, if you're not favored to him, he shouldn't be with you. He shouldn't have to deal with you, right? And so it goes both ways. Marriage is an exchange. And so if you can't articulate what you want in exchange for the favor that you give in a marriage, girl, good luck. So you need to own what that value is to you, whether you want a man with money, whether you want a man who's tall, good looks, whether he, you want him to have spiritual covering, great father, you know, biblical understanding, all these other things that you want in a high quality man, you need to ask for it, first of all, from the Lord, and then believe that you are willing and believe that you are worthy of receiving it. And then when it comes to you, actually receive it and don't repel it. Don't self-sabotage. Don't talk yourself out of a blessing. We're going to talk about our mouth and how to stay feminine around men and how to control our masculine ways and our masculine energy because the Lord gave us both beautiful energies inside of us. And sometimes one can dominate the other and sabotage our courtship, right? So we're going to talk about how to do all those things, but asking, believing, and receiving is so important. You got to ask. You got to like create that love list and then you ask the Lord, this is what I desire. I want a man who's A, B, C, D, and E, and F, right? I'm not accepting anything less. Make it a command. Speak it in present tense. Type it out. Write it. Read it so that your mind can become aligned with who it is you say you desire to attract, right? And then believe it. Believe that this dating life is possible, right? Don't release the guilt and the, and the worthlessness. And because I have so many kids or because I have one child or because I've been in, uh, married before and I'm divorced, all these other things, girl, you are still favored, right? You can still be a wife. You are still favored in the Lord's eyes. And so you are still favorable to men, right? I've seen women who have four or five kids by different men clean up their act, let go of her emotional baggage, and she became a bomb wife and mother to somebody else, you know, to her husband, and they are living happily ever after, right? And so don't ever count yourself out. You have to believe that you are worthy, that you can attract the man, that there's actually the man that you desire out there. That's a whole nother thing, right? You actually have to believe that you can get what you say you want, that it's out there, right? And then receive. You cannot be self-sabotaging what you are asking for and believing for. You got to receive it. If a man comes up to you and say, hey, can I take you out to dinner? You can't be like, no. If he's sliding your DM and be like, hey, can I go out tonight? You can't be, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I don't got enough time. I got to do this. I got to do that. You have to make your dating life a priority, sis. I don't know what else to tell you. Like I said, the cable guy is not knocking up on nobody's door like, hey, I'm about to come scoop you up at seven. Be ready. Like, that's just not how it's going to happen. It's going to be the sliding of the DMs. It's going to be you being out at the grocery store and the guy approaching you. It's going to be you at work and the guy around, you know, who's in the other office bumping into you or you at a networking event, a guy see you and says something to you. That's how it's going to look because we date in proximity right? And so we got to be open to receiving what it is that we say we want. You can't be saying, I want a dating life. I want to get married in the next couple of years, but you're not giving any time, attention, and energy to your dating life and to your courtship. How are you going to get to know that person? You just about to pop up with a husband? Like the Lord just about to put a man in your bed and be like, I'm your husband now, sis. Like, no, that's not how it's going to happen, right? So we got to make sure that we're asking believing and receiving what it is that we desire all right thank you so much for watching this video make sure that you go into the, the description box and get that link to my um wedding on a budget series because i believe all women whether you are engaged or not engaged yet or don't even have a, a prospect <laughs> to even get engaged with you should always be planning on how to execute a budget uh friendly wedding so you and your husband create a marriage on solid financial footing all right Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you share this with someone and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.